Hi, my name is Gloria Coleman and I am an artist that just absolutely loves to do chalk art. And if you would like to draw along with me, you will be able to do that if you have a good set of either crayons or markers or colored pencils in a set of about 8 to 12. You'll be able to, call, to follow along. Right now, uh, as you can see, I'm drawing some water. And I have created in the background some sky first. And I've also toned the paper with some blue. So I'm adding some dark blue to give it an appearance of waves and also some lighter blue. And this is actually very easy to do if you know how to squiggle. And if you know how to do dashes and dots, a lot of the water strokes are very easy to do. And I usually work from the back to the front. If you notice, I'm putting some brown dashes in the water. What on earth could that be? They're going to end up being pieces of wood that have broken off a ship. The title of this picture is Shipwreck. And Paul and the whole crew has gone into the water and he was very afraid. And you will see in the future an angel that will be encouraging him. You'll also notice that the black is put alongside the brown to create a shadow and some lighter blue or white around the pieces of wood so it gives it the appearance of floating in the water. You'll see a horizon line in the very back that's very light. I work from the back to the front as I may have said before and it creates a sense of perspective when you have the lighter colors in the back and the darker colors in the front. At the beginning of the picture you just saw um, an array of toning of blue this creates an undertone for me to draw on top of. It also keeps the time to create the picture more concise because I won't, don't have to create shadows. That's exactly what I'm doing as I'm forming these rocks on the sides here. The darker color instantly forms the shadow and the lighter color instantly forms the shape of the object. So from a distance, this looks like rocks with highlights of the light catching on the sharp edges of the rock. Chalk art is designed to be seen from a distance. You are getting kind of the um, inside story to be able to see it up close. If you were sitting back 20, 30, 40 feet or in a congregation or in a classroom, these particular strokes would have a lot more contrast to the eye, which is what I am purpose to do with the chalk art so that you can have clear shapes. These are cutting in back towards the horizon. The ocean is coming in from between these rocks and if you were to read the scripture this is exactly what happened. They were they were caught uh, from all the, the storm that that completely you know threw the ship uh, on the rocks. They were caught in the in this inlet and they crashed onto the rocks. And they had previously had thrown everything overboard. They thought for sure they were all going to have their final demise. But as it turned out, all of them were saved. And the dark line against the sky gives it a great definition. And if you have um, black or white chalk, you're able to do these highlights and these delineations and create a wonderful, wonderful um, effect of, of the rocks. Here is a ship. Now this is back in the Roman times and the Roman ships had a front on them that was usually in a curled design and that's why you see that little curve up there. This is the front of the ship that has crashed against the rocks and if you just take the side of your chalk or the side of your crayon or marker and do some dashes, you can create the effect of the wood look on the ships. These ships were very seaworthy. And I don't know if you know the, the history of um, some of the seafaring of that time. The Romans were jealous that the Carthaginians had gotten the, you know, the, the control of the sea and the Romans knew nothing about 
about, you know, sailing the seas. So they designed <laughs> ships so that they could win every battle. They actually designed some things that put the Carthaginians out of business. <laughs> and Paul was on one of those ships. And so it was a very seaworthy ship. So for it to actually be crashed against the rocks was a great loss because they were very expensive to build. And here the sails have been torn. They had, I, I believe from the scripture, it was two weeks of being tossed and they, they didn't have any food and water left and the sails were ripping and they were really afraid for their lives. Again, as you can see, I am putting a contrasting line there. Even though um, you know, the sails are not black, we do need to have lines so that it contrasts the very beautiful sky in the light blue. It also brings the ship forward and it makes the sky appear to be behind it. Anytime you put a dark color on top of a light color, you will definitely have a perspective. And here we are putting some dashing waves on top of that dark blue. The chalk that I'm using is very soft and it's very easy to draw on top of other colors, whereas most other pastels are either hard or semi-soft. You cannot ever draw on top of other colors. The silhouettes, if you can follow along, are done. You do a circle first. Uh, this is a happy man. He's off the ship and he's rejoicing that he's standing on the rocks instead of being on that ship and drowning. And I've drawn a circle first and just the outline of people standing on the rocks. If you um, have a hard time drawing people, um, it's very easy to draw silhouettes. And you can just draw dark lines and draw a dark outline and eventually these will be highlighted. Some of them will be, you'll see the whole person standing there, and some of them will be, appear to be on the other side of the rock like the top guy is there. And hey boy, they are really happy, boy. They are not on that ship. And so I have put, you can put as many people on the rocks as you would like to. I just sort of put a suggestion of a few with uh, different hand motions. It's very good to have variety instead of everybody standing in one position. You want to have uh, some people with their hands up, some people with their hands down. and You can show the joy by the uplifted arms. Sometimes if you draw arms that are just down, you don't know what they're feeling. Uh, in this case, you know that they're happy because their arms are up. There will be several of these. And again, the chalk is soft. It goes on top of that light blue. It'll go on top of everything that I have created there, including the added brown and the added uh, black. And they are just so happy. Have you ever been in a situation where you had a, a near accident or you thought you almost broke something or you almost spilled something and oh my goodness, it was, everything turned out okay. You were very happy. I've been in a lot of situations where I felt like I just uh, didn't know what I was going to do and everything turned out all right. This particular picture, the shipwreck, has a lesson with it, which is to trust God. Now obviously these are not um, waves. I am going to be drawing some faces here. The characters in the story are Paul and Giovanni, which is a young man who actually got to accompany his father on this trip where the shipwreck took place. So this was a tremendous adventure for Giovanni, the young person that was uh, on the ship. It was his first time in the story. And while I'm talking about the story, I will talk to you about what on earth inspired me to do these pictures. These pictures were inspired by the um, creator of the stories named Pat Holt. And with the cooperation and inspiration of the film crew and the production crew, we uh, came together and decided upon the, the type of subject we would be, I would be drawing and the appearance of the colors and exactly what would be there for others to look at. The center figure is going to be Giovanni's father and the one on the left there with the eyes and the nose that you see will be Giovanni. 
They will both be looking at Paul and they are very relieved that they are right out with him away from the ship. In the future you're going to see them floating on a on the same board. They're all they're all floating there and very happy. Drawing um, faces live is a is is a more of a challenge than drawing say a silhouette. Mostly because I have to draw from the side. As you notice, I'm drawing from the side. And if I was in front of it, obviously you would not be able to see what I was doing. So I have to be very careful and um, sometimes I have some little guidelines that you're not able to see but I am so that I can get the proportions as close as possible. A lot of times they're not perfect, but then life is not perfect either. So it's okay. One of the great things about chalk art is that it's a very forgiving medium in that you can erase it pretty quickly and you can change it rather than the paint or markers which uh, you can't erase. Here I'm drawing Paul. He is looking at the characters here and he's reassuring them that everything's going to be all right. I'm actually using what's called a china marker to do the uh, delineation and Giovanni's father is talking and thanking Paul and good old uh, Giovanni is uh, excitedly um, glad that he has gone through this adventure. This is probably the most challenging part of the whole um, chalk art piece. Most chalk art is not done with characters, but because this chalk art is a little different in that we are illustrating stories that have been written. A lot of chalk art is done to music and you just do the landscape. But in this case, it was very important that we could illustrate the story that was being um, written by Pat and to do it according to what the producers would like to um, show about these characters. I'm building the flesh tones with a peach and a red and a blend. And if you have crayons, of course, you can probably pick a color that would be close to this. I've got to do highlights on the faces. And this, is a, this takes a lot of time. And it's a lot of fun if you uh, have the time. If you're in a rush, I wouldn't recommend it. I would recommend you um, marking the area, maybe coming back later. Here I'm going to be giving Giovanni's father a nice heavy beard. Back in those days, um, I don't know whether they styled their beards or not, but they certainly wore them. <laughs> I was also told that Paul was a little older when the shipwreck happened. So for him to be swimming in the water, and he had to be very fit to have survived this particular crash. Giovanni's dad, um, they're from Italy, and so he has dark brown hair and probably brown eyes and kind of a curly look, and they're pretty, uh, they're pretty wet. <laughs> They've been in that water, and it has been quite a while since um, they got out of that ship. Giovanni has um, always wanted to be at sea from when you hear the story and he finally got to be with um, his father on this trip and his father was very worried about him but Giovanni just insisted. Well, Giovanni is uh, looking at Paul and wishing that uh, he could be a great sailor and he got a lot of respect for Paul for the, and during this trip because he understood how close to God that Paul was. And here I'm drawing with the side of the chalk to create my highlights again. And I have previously talked about toning. As you can see, we have kind of the purpley color there already. That was actually brushed on with an eraser on top of a paper that has a consistency a lot like grocery store bags. In fact, you can draw on grocery store bags with chalk and it's very, very effective. The toning creates the shadow opportunities for the future as I add highlights, like you saw the white highlights on Giovanni's attire there. Chalk art also is um, created not only by highlights, but by drawing shapes, by having one color next to another. There are a lot of 
there's a variety of ways in order to create the effect of the image, whether it's a rock or a, the ship or the sky or a silhouette, or in this case, here I am drawing the, the faces of the characters. Mostly what I'm trying to do here is giving the shape of the face by highlighting and shadows. I'm using the China marker to put in the details because if I were to use chalk, it would absolutely um, start feathering out into the other areas of the blue, which would not be good. I mentioned before that perhaps Paul was a little older, and what would that mean? That would mean that perhaps he had um, grayer hair, but also that his um, there should be on his face a look of experience, a look of confidence, a look of of the fact that he had known that they were going to be okay. It's recorded in the scripture that an angel had spoken to him and told him not to worry, that everyone was going to be safe. And that was Paul's greatest concern because he was concerned for their spiritual health. He was trying to uh, be a witness for Christ and his whole life was completely devoted to Christ and being that evangelist. I found it kind of interesting that the angel had said he was going to be okay, and um, he was actually headed to trials for his faith and persecution. But Paul was rejoicing that he was able to survive this and to bring more people to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I'm adding some more wood. They are actually floating on the same piece of wood and trying to you know, be um, afloat as they are, are waiting for um, rescue or being able to get over to the, to the side of the, uh, the beach there. I'm adding sort of highlights to make his hair look like perhaps he is older, maybe older than 50 or so, and maybe a little balding at the top there. But you can you see the tones? They create the shadows. So I don't have to go back and actually put shadows on the side of his nose unless I want to. They are automatically created. Again, I'm reminding you, these, this is art to be seen from a distance. So the more contrast that I can have with lights and darks, the better the person can see it that, say, perhaps is looking uh, behind me in a church setting or in a a hall where there's a lot of people. Sometimes I will actually be on camera uh, while I'm drawing because the, the size of the hall or the room that I'm drawing on, they'd never be able to see any of this. How on earth did I decide on the colors for Giovanni's hair or for his father's hair? Uh, we had a lot of dialogue between the producers and myself and the creator of the story. Since we're creating a lot of stories, we don't want everyone to have the same color hair or everyone to have the same appearance. Uh, character development is something that is done by um, illustrators and people that actually study that kind of work. So I have to, um, I depend upon their ideas and their input as I try to create characters that will go with their illustrations also that will be in the story. I don't have to do too much detail, I just have to create a suggestion of the character because the, the art is being done many times with music or voice or narration and sometimes they intersperse live action of other, other elements of the film. It's a great fun way to draw. I hope that you are being able to draw some of this. I am actually putting on some highlighting on these particular characters right now. These chalks are called fluorescent chalks. You can buy fluorescent chalks from an art store. You can get them uh, the same effect with uh, fluorescent markers or fluorescent crayons. And these are usually used not only to highlight um, just in natural light, but later on when you see the ultraviolet light, these will really become bright and they're, they're just a very exciting chalk to work with. A lot of people will uh, mix these um, chalks with their, with their other colors too for highlighting effects. I'm going to highlight the ship up here. We are going to see in the sky an incredible and invisible picture. Now I see the 
This is a picture of Paul's angel. I'm so happy to have you with me today. I hope you will join us again on Celebrate the Light as we worship with chalk.